Hi, in this quick tutorial I just want to go over the details of Unity's post-processing stack. Um, this ends up being a collection of behaviors that are attached to the camera in Unity that allows you to create effects like vignetting, ambient occlusion, some real-time reflection, other things like that. Now, before we get going in Unity, I want to just point out that Unity by default doesn't have any of these things turned on. This is in contrast to Unreal, which has almost all of these things turned on by default. Um, it's part of the reason why right out of the box, oftentimes the Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine based levels end up looking a little bit more beautiful uh, than stuff right out of uh, Unity. Much different uh, approach when one we're super beautiful and then you uh, optimize as needed or you start off with the super beautiful and unreal and then you end up turning a lot of that stuff off as you light only to turn it back on. In Unity it starts off very very lean and then you add the um, add the effects on that you want. So in this sample what uh, I'm showing here is a simple scene with some simple lighting, some baked lighting that's already built in here. Um, but you can see that it doesn't have any ambient occlusion. Um, the things that are lit up don't look particularly believable. Um, so we want to start to add some of this post-processing stack. The way that you get to this is you'll need to go into the asset store in the asset store, if you just search for post-processing stack, um, then the free post-processing stack from Unity will pop up. You go ahead and import it into your project. Um, this will create a large collection of tools that if you go ahead and import them, um, then they'll be added to your project. Now, in order to use these, then you need to um, add uh, the post-processing stack profile to your particular camera. Uh, but to do that you need to first uh, create this. So um, once you're all imported and your post-processing stack is indeed uh, in your project, you'll be able to see it in your project window. If you just right-click in your project window here and create, one of the things you can do is create a post-processing profile. Post-processing profile you can name this whatever you want. We'll just uh, do a test post-processing profile. Um, what will happen then is that when you look at this, you'll be able to start to see all of the different um, uh, different post-processing stuff that you can do. Um, now, by default, all of this is here, but none of this is applied to the scene. So let's look at applying this real quick. I'm going to come in on my first-person controller is what I've done here. The first-person character is actually the camera. Um, so here, um, I've already got one added here, but here let me show you how to how to build this in. I'm going to add a component here that's going to be post-processing behavior. When this is here, it's going to ask for the post-processing profile, which you just drag from over here. And then what happens is that in uh, if you start editing this, so for instance, uh, if I turn on um, ambient occlusion and I start to come in here, then uh, here, let me just get this slightly different view. If I turn this off and on, you can start to see the effects of it a little bit. You can, of course, kind of turn this up so I can make that more intense. I can change the radius of this ambient occlusion however I need to, anything from the sample counts and whatever I, I want to in, in this area. So you can start to see what's happening there. Some of the others are a little bit more complicated. Uh, so for instance, bloom. Uh, as you turn on bloom, then sometimes it has to do with the threshold is the easiest way to start to work with this. But as you start to decrease the threshold, then you can start to see the bloom showing up on surfaces that are supposed to be lit. Um, there's a lot of manipulation you can do here to make this exactly right, but for now we'll just go ahead and uh, play with that kind of loosely. Now there's other sorts of things that you can do that can be more processor heavy, like anti-aliasing, uh, which can smooth out all the edges, give this a uh, much more uh, beautiful look, but it can start to to wear on your project. You can also do other things like color grading if you want to kind of do some tone mapping. Again, tone mapping is turned on by default in Unreal. Here you uh, need to turn it on, but there's all the settings for tone mapping, which we won't go into um, here. Finally, uh, one of the other things that is turned on by default in Unreal is a vignette. So if I turn on the vignetting, you can see the darkness that starts to happen uh, around those corners. So when all those things are turned on, then suddenly you can start to see that this is a much different, uh, much different look. So for instance, if we come in and I turn off all the post-processing and then turn it back on, 
you can start to see how that uh, starts to look better and better um, as it goes along. So you don't need it for every project, um, but if you're trying to get that kind of uh, uh, super nice look that you're used to in Unreal right out of the box here in, uh, in Unity, that's how you do it, it was with post-processing stack.